the stony face of the people of ancient dragons among whom life is typically short. With this description alone, we know that there is or was a group of people related to the ancient dragons in some way, though not much beyond that is provided to us. What can be inferred is that these people are related to the ancient dragons, live short lives, and perhaps have skin similar to that of Gravelstone, considering they are described as having stony faces. Like a few other appearances that the player can choose, Draconians are never actually seen anywhere in-game, as friendly NPCs or enemies. While arguments can be made about other races or types of humanoids appearing in-game, such as those who believe the Nightfolk and Nox to be the same, there is yet to be an in-game character that is Draconian, as far as I am aware. So first and foremost, as most of you are likely aware, Draconians and Dragonkin are not the same. Draconians are implied to be the offspring of ancient dragons and humans, whereas Dragonkin are products of experiments carried out by the Nox and the Eternal Cities, in their attempt to recreate the power of ancient dragons, and ultimately create their own candidate for their Lord of Night. In fact, Dragonkin are described as being essentially pale, frost imitations of true ancient dragons. The Dragonkin the Tarnish can come across primarily uses Lice Eightning as a mode of attack, unlike true ancient dragons, which tend to use the Red Lightning of Primordial Gold. Moreover, the Dragonkin do have four wings, like ancient dragons, though they appear too small and fragile to carry them far. Honestly, the wings on the Dragonkin remind me of the wings of Deathbirds and Deathrite Birds, though that likely doesn't mean much. We still do not know exactly how the Dragon King came to be, as the Nox appear to be quite secretive about their experiments and overall goals, especially after being scorned by the Greater Will and the Golden Order. However, it's likely that a human or humanoid was transformed into what we see as the Dragon King soldiers, as they have a more humanoid appearance than other dragons, suggesting this origin. Now, whether or not they were transformed through the use of Mimic Tears or another means, we know that they likely were not members of the ancient dragon cult, and probably didn't consume the hearts of dragons. I say this because Magma Worms, another boss-type enemy that the Tarnished can run into several times, are described as the product of a human consuming too many dragon hearts, and ultimately metamorphizing into grotesque imitations of dragons. And as the name Magma Worm implies, these beings use magma as a method of attack, yet do not seem to have the capability to wield lightning unlike the Dragonkin soldiers. What this demonstrates is that there is more than one way for humans to go about transforming into dragon-like creatures, and that the Nox were a bit closer than members of the ancient dragon cult. While the Dragonkin soldiers' wings likely aren't as useful as true ancient dragons, they are still functional enough to slam down onto the Tarnished and cause some trouble, whereas the Magma Worm has no wings and typically crawls along the ground and even when they stand up to attack, they aren't the most graceful fighters. So perhaps the Nox were onto something, and perhaps they would have perfected their soldiers if they hadn't been interrupted. So, while Draconians are different from Dragonkin soldiers, which are also different from Magma Worms, they are certainly more similar but not the same as Draconian Tree Sentinels. The only reason I mention these Sentinels is that aside from having an annoying fire-breathing horse, they wield the Red Lightning of Ancient Dragons. I find this interesting as they use the lightning of the ancient dragons and have not yet transformed into magma worms. However, we know that the shattering was not likely as recent as we're led to believe at the start of the game, suggesting these draconic tree sentinels have been around for quite some time in contrast with the draconians, who seemingly have died off or are simply so few in number we don't see any in game. Perhaps draconic tree sentinels found the perfect balance in dragon communion and consumed the ideal number of dragon hearts. Or perhaps the Draconic Tree Sentinels primarily feasted upon the hearts of ancient dragons, those with the ability to wield red lightning. This would separate them from others who likely partook in dragon communion, such as the Lanedale Knights, who use golden and not red lightning, which could relate to the type of dragon hearts consumed. Regardless of why this occurs, we do know that Draconic Tree Sentinels are more similar to Draconians than many other members of the ancient dragon cult if only due to their slightly draconic features and use of ancient red lightning. Before delving any deeper into the specifics of draconians and vike and lanciacs and all that kerfuffle, I want to first discuss Godwin and Fortisax. Fortisax is an ancient dragon and brother to lanciacs, which, 
I just want to get that out of the way right now. Didn't really do too much research <laughs> into how to say Lancey Axe, and I'm just, I'm just going with it. I'm going Lancey Axe on this one. Anyway, Lancey Axe, another ancient dragon the Tarnished can face in the Lands Between. Godwin, the supposed firstborn of America the Eternal, befriended the ancient dragon Fortis Axe, and from this friendship, Godwin learned to use Golden Lightning, which would become synonymous with the Golden Order. The friendship spawned the formation of the ancient dragon cult, and through this, magma worms and draconic tree sentinels came to exist. The ancient dragon cult itself is a bit of an odd organization, as they seem to revere the power of dragons and even respect them to a degree, especially the likes of Godwin and Vike, yet consume their hearts to gain power that can rival that of the ancient dragons. It's especially interesting as Fortisax seemingly gifted the ability of the Golden Lightning to Godwin, and perhaps played a major role in the formation of the dragon cult. Furthermore, his sister Lanciax is a known dragon priest for the cult, and even donned a human appearance, an ability that appears limited to the ancient dragons such as Lanciax and Fortisax, and raises interesting questions about what happens if someone like Plasa Dusax transforms into a human since he has several heads and all. Regardless of that thought, the fact is that ancient dragons and humans can befriend one another, and dragons can not only appear as humans, but can also gift their abilities to those they have a connection with, as is the case between Fortisax and Godwin, as well as Lanciax and Vike. Knowing that Lanciax had a human form, she would take to interact with the dragon cult, perhaps Fortisax too had a human form he would utilize when interacting with humanoids, such as Godwin. Now, as I just mentioned, the ancient dragon Lanciax was a dragon priest for the ancient dragon cult, and could take human form which likely was a great help in interacting with the cult when it was active. Interestingly, while in human form, Lanciax mated with the Knight Vike, or at least that's what I've been led to believe looking into some translations and people having discussions on Reddit, so let's just go with it for a second, and likely with other knights as well, perhaps. So, Lanciax might have gotten around a little bit around the Dragon Cult. However, from the description evidence, we can learn that Lanciax was especially fond of Vike, as the incantation, Vike's Dragon Bolt, claims that of all the knights, Vike the Dragon Spear was the one Lanciax loved the most. This obviously explains the name of the incantation, and again demonstrates that dragons can share their power with humans. Moreover, I may be reading into this too much, though I've read some discussions around it on Reddit, and the choice of wording in the description of Vike's Dragon Bolt is interesting as Vike being the one Lanciax loved the most may imply Lanciax may have had romantic entanglements with multiple humans. While it's not explicit that the love between Vike and Lanciax is romantic, all the evidence seems to be there, from Vike's incantation to Vike's choice to search for the frenzied flame, and Lanciax still guarding the secret entrance to the Altus Plateau years later. To not get too sidetracked, there is a theory in the community that Vike only sought out the Three Fingers because he didn't want to sacrifice his maiden, who happened to be Lanciax. Regardless, I am interested in the possible products of such a relationship, as we still don't know specifically where or how Draconians came to be, and where they have subsequently gone. It's my personal theory that Draconians are the offspring of humans and ancient dragons, particularly around the time of the Dragon Cult. To be fair, I am inserting some of my own headcanon here, but I do think there could be some validity to the idea. As I've already mentioned, Draconians are nowhere to be found in Elden Ring, neither as friendly or hostile NPCs, and this could easily be hinting at the extinction of the Draconians as a result of the Dragon Cult dissolving and falling apart around the time of the Shattering. We now have a better understanding that the Shattering occurred at least several centuries prior to the start of the game's narrative and thus it's not unlikely that the Draconians died out during this time. Of the little info the game provides, we know the Draconians, unlike ancient dragons, live short lives. Moreover, we know that they are separate from dragonkin soldiers, magma worms, and draconic tree sentinels. Given their more humanoid appearance and description claiming they are the people of the ancient dragons, leads me to believe they are the offspring of dragons and humans, which could explain the short lives they live. In real life, there are different species of animals that can mate together, however their offspring will often be infertile or fated to live short lives, a phenomenon I believe the Draconians of Elden Ring are mirroring. I also don't think the idea is too far-fetched considering how humans have sought the power of dragons in Elden Ring, and have been willing to go so far as consuming dragon hearts in an effort to gain their abilities. 
The Draconic Tree Sentinels, in particular, are described as having attempted to become dragons themselves. The Magma Worms are a result of consuming too many dragon hearts, and Dragon Can Soldiers are some kind of experiment involving humans and likely mimic tears in attempts to recreate ancient dragons. I believe that all these examples demonstrate that humans and dragons can interact, share power, and even mate, yet they are still ultimately incompatible species. Dragonkin soldiers are clearly failed attempts to recreate ancient dragons from humans. Magma worms are the natural result of humans consuming dragon hearts too frequently, and draconic tree sentinels took it upon themselves to try and become dragons, yet even they are pale imitations of a true ancient dragon's power. And, if draconians are the offspring of dragons and humans, they are doomed to live short, likely infertile lives. I think the information we have on Vike and Lanciax bolsters this argument, as it again shows us that dragons and humans could become romantically involved, and even hold a deep love for one another. Heck, other than draconic tree sentinels, we only see Vike use the red gold lightning of ancient dragons when compared to other dragon knights. I also found that detail interesting, because the ancient dragon cult prayer book that gives the tarnished access to red lightning incantations is located in Fara Missoula, and was not provided to the dragon cult of Lane Dell. I just find that environmental detail awesome, as it helps explain why so few knights use red lightning, and it's simply because they didn't have access to it. Vike, however, had access to the love of an ancient dragon. To argue my theory a bit more here, draconians are strikingly humanoid, and this could easily be to the ancient dragons taking on human form in order to mate with humans. So while they are in human form when interacting with humans, at the genetic level they are still dragons, and those features are represented in the appearances of draconians, such as the stony skin. Knowing that they are also described as the people of the ancient dragons lends credence to this theory, as the ancient dragon cult no longer exists in its original form, and ancient dragons themselves are exceedingly rare to come across in the wild. While the statues of humanoid figures in Fair Missoula could be indicative of draconians, I'm just not sure which ones honestly, as some are clearly depicting dragons and beastmen, whereas others appear to be of typical humans. Though, there are also statues that seemingly depict other creatures, such as worm faces, so perhaps some of these statues do in fact depict draconians. So, given that there are various depictions of multiple species in Fair Missoula, suggests that various forms of life resided here, or at the very least revered the dragons. And of course, Draconians could originally come from Faramazula. I am just curious as to why there seems to be so little evidence of Draconians in Faramazula, as it would conceptually be the ideal place for the birthplace of such a people, ones that are a merger of human and dragon kind, especially when considering the evidence that humans were present in Faramazula at one point in time. So of course Faramazula is the likely origin of Draconians, though I personally wonder how many were actually born during the reign of the Golden Order, as the Tarnished themselves can be a Draconian origin, though it's not clear whether or not the player's character, race, or origin really matters. In my head, though, it certainly does. To me, if we are able to play as a Draconian, it suggests that even Draconians once had access to grace, as even they can be tarnished. If they can be tarnished, they can be blessed by grace. So what does all of this mean? It might not be shocking to hear that Draconians are likely the offspring of dragons and humans, given their appearance and evidence that dragons and humans could be romantically involved. I find it so fascinating as other Draconic enemies such as Dragonkin and Magma Worms came to be through their own means. Other Draconic enemies have taken steps to adopt the aspects of ancient dragons because they covet the power of the dragons and have become malformed humanoids as a result with some admittedly coming closer to achieving their goal than others. I also really hope we eventually gain more insight into the Eternal Cities and Silver Mimic Tears, as the Dragonkin are the closest attempt at recreating the power of an ancient dragon, despite it still being a failed attempt. And as a little aside, I wonder how much the creation of the Dragonkin played into the decision of the Greater Will to condemn the Nox and the Eternal Cities. Regardless, the Draconic Humanoid enemies of Elden Ring vary in their origins, though I think we can learn one thing from all of them, the dragons and humanoids do not mix. For magma worms and likely Draconic Tree Sentinels, the sin of dragon communion, consuming dragon hearts, transformed them into lesser dragons that pale in comparison even to modern dragons. For the dragonkin, experimentation in the Eternal Cities admittedly led to the closest recreation of an ancient dragon, though even these beings are shortcomings, 
as their legs are almost useless, their wings are feeble, and their lightning is a cold imitation of true dragon lightning. Draconian tree sentinels, like the magma worms, are humanoids that most likely partook in dragon communion, though perhaps they began this communion later than other members of the dragon cult, and did not completely transform into lesser dragons. Or perhaps the presence of the draconic tree sentinel in Faramazula suggests these knights consumed only ancient dragon hearts, or obtained knowledge of red gold lightning by traveling to Faramazula, or some combination of both. Regardless, Draconic Tree Sentinels definitely lucked out and did not completely lose their humanity. Finally, while only a theory, I do believe Draconians to be the children of dragons and humans. If we did not know that ancient dragons could take on a humanoid form, I would likely not think this, though to me it strongly suggests that Draconians are the offspring of ancient dragons and humans, and this would explain their short lifespan, a side effect of dragons and humans not being compatible theme echoed in other draconic enemies. But hey, it's just a theory. In Elden Ring theory. <laughs> Alright, peace out everyone. I'll see you in whatever video I decide to do next. Uh, take it easy and stay hydrated.